Americans are builders, dreamers, inventors. And despite what some think, we're not done yet. Meet two Maverick innovators with ties to investors. Reichardt, a successful inventor with over 120 products to his credit. That's very impressive. And Garrett, a world-famous scientist who took Einstein's theory of relativity to the next level. This thing has fail all over. Ow. Together, they're scouring the country looking for inventors who might have the next big thing. We have to go look at a product and we have to decide whether the product is a go or it's a no-go. They'll put each invention to the test to see if it measures up. And if it's no-go, we're not going to invest our money. A yes from them can change an inventor's life and just might change the world. So who do we have coming in today? We have an inventor who is a musician. He has invented, I believe, some type of do-it-yourself, build-it-your-own music device. I'm Chris Badney, and I'm a United States Postal Service letter carrier inventor. My invention is the Bugdan box base. It's a cardboard box, upright base. It's a kit, but it's something that anybody can assemble. I already sold 2,000 of them. So the two of us are going to be building this thing? Uh, I think, yeah, this is one of these things where we actually build this thing ourselves and test it for ourselves. Traditional upright bases are really expensive, with prices starting between eight and $900. If this guy has actually created a much cheaper base, then this is worth investigating. I think that's our inventor. I've been playing music for the true love of music since the late 70s. Hello, I'm Chris Badney with the Cardboard Box Upright Bass. I've been playing in the bars and coffee houses, school auditoriums, rec centers, laundromats, bakeries, outdoor bistros, indoor places, every place. You've got a bass in the box. It's a box bass. All, right. All my life, I've been making my own stuff. You know, I, I don't want to say like I'm some poor kid from Detroit, but I'm the poor kid from Detroit. We didn't have money. To, to buy Fender Stratocasters and, you know, expensive amplifiers and stuff. We just made do with what we did. So tell us a little bit about your background. I've been a musician all my life. I started playing harmonica when I was seven. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I, I still have, I never go anyplace without my harmonica. You still have the harmonica you had as a kid? <laughs> Oh, yeah. And do you play that when you're on your mail route? Actually, I do, yeah. They, they know me as that harmonica guy. Now, that's how you warn the dogs that you're approaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what, I'm used to thinking of an upright bass as a much larger instrument. So. It takes a big body, a big body, hollow body of air to produce, but the shape isn't necessarily necessary. Want to open it up? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. It's a box within a box. It is a box with a box. Now, just so I can confirm, this is just an extra piece of art? No, 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 no. That's, that's the most important piece of the whole box base. That's the sound post. That transfers the energy from the front to the back. I think this should have something written on it that says, do not throw away. Chris has invented an upright base that you build out of a cardboard box, a couple pieces of wood, some string, and some metal screws. When the strings are plucked, the vibrations travel through the sound post and into the box. The air inside vibrates, and that generates the same bassy, low-end tone that we expect from a traditional bass. Well, what's an upright bass usually sell for? The cheap ones start at $1,000. And on my website, I sell it for 99 bucks. Ah, there's instructions. That's the link to the instructions. You're sending people online? Yes. I love that. I'm gonna go online with this, and we're gonna go do this together. Right. Okay. Being that this is a do-it-yourself kit, we have to start by assembling it. So for our first test, we're gonna time how long it takes and how easily we can put together the bogged on base. So it looks like we're doing two-string build instructions here? Okay, well, let's make our uh, primary list. We need to figure out all the tools we need and make sure we have all the parts. All the pieces are pre-cut and pre-drilled. All you need is a roll of good packing tape, a hot glue gun, a Phillips screwdriver, a small wrench to tune it with, and a, a razor knife. It takes about two hours to do. No one under 10, I would guess, is gonna be doing this, because it actually takes some uh, finger muscle to get this stuff bent. Nut slot should be on this side of the neck. We were only 20 minutes into the project, and we already ran into a problem. It has to be on this side. I'm not disagreeing, it has to be on the side. I'm saying that in the photograph, it's on this side. We originally thought there was a problem with the instructions, but it turns out that some of Chris's pre-assembled pieces were built incorrectly. My guess is that the bolts were put but, in but, from but, the wrong look side. At, look at the picture. Well, no, let's, let's look yeah. at this picture first. Do you see the bolts? Yes. Do you see the bolts? Yes. 
you see that the wood's on the left-hand side and then goes to the right-hand side. However, your fitted countersinks, countersinks are, on are on the wrong side. I made a mistake. I put the tuners on the wrong side. If they followed the instructions at that particular moment, and that would have made a disaster in the products. We'll refer to that as a manufacturing defect. Well, that was a huge pain. If the inventor wasn't there to help us, we would have assembled it completely wrong. And there would have been nothing we could have done to fix it because it was already all glued together. OK, we're done. All right. Okay. Despite the confusion with the instructions, it took a little over two hours to build it, which is pretty much what Chris said. But now we have to find out, is this going to sound like a real bass? We've got a computer here that can convert the sound coming into the microphone and analyze it and see how much energy is coming out in each different frequency. But the advantage of throwing this up onto a scope like this is that we can see accurately what's really happening through the entire spectrum. Using a frequency spectrum analyzer, we'll compare the Bogdan bass's full range of sound to that of a standard upright bass. Give me any note you want. That's D. There you go. There's your D. And that's a clean D, too. Why don't you produce the same D on this? That's a D. You have a pretty good pitch. Been doing a long time. Apparently. This was the power spectrum of the Bugdan bass, and this is the power spectrum of the standard bass. Hmm. And you can see with the, uh, the standard bass that uh, you have a little bit of extra noise up here at around 500 hertz, whereas the Bugdan bass is a pretty clean drop off in the power spectrum there. Because it produced a better and cleaner sound, the peaks on the Bogdan bass moved out much quicker than the peaks on a traditional bass. The scope shows it. This thing produces a nice, clean sound. It does. Scope don't lie. Scope don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> the Bogdan bass produces a cleaner sound, but that's to my ears. I want to run a blind test. We're going to bring in a group of musicians that have been playing together for 20 years using a standard upright and see if we can fool the pros. The concept's very simple. We are testing two musical instruments. They're both basses. And one is your standard classic stand-up bass. And the other one is a do-it-yourself kit that was made of cardboard and pieces of wood and metal screws. So Chris, choose your weapon. OK. Bring up your paddles. Interesting. OK, now he's going to switch instruments. All three musicians could tell Chris was playing a real upright bass, but these guys are pros. The real question is, can the cardboard box bass match the integrity of the upright's performance? OK, guys, give me your vote. Interesting. I have absolutely no idea what they're gonna what they're gonna do. Now I'm stressing out big time, man. Interesting. Now turn around. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so our two professional musicians thought they were listening to the pro. Only one of the professional musicians correctly identified the Bogdan bass. The other two mistook the Bogdan for the real thing. That thing produces an interesting sound, doesn't it's it? It's a very nice sound. Good. The tone of that bass seemed a lot rounder and fuller than I would have thought. I don't know if it would hold up in a rock and roll situation, but certainly for a jazz situation, for sure. The Bogdan bass was much smoother, and it yes. actually had a richer sound. If professional musicians can't tell the difference between these two basses, then I don't know who can. Chris has really built something special here. Well, technically, we built it. So Garrett, we're going to let them keep playing. You're not going to go outside and deliberate. I want world domination. I want, I want $100 million. I want to call up Donald Trump and say, hey, man, what you doing today? Why don't you come on over and watch the game? That's what I want. But honestly, what I think is going to happen is they're going to say, Chris, you've done it. You've changed the world. You've improved actual lives. You've, you've brought music into the homes. I thought this thing was going to sound like crap. It actually sounds pretty good. But putting this thing together was a pain in the ass. You know, bending that cardboard around, getting the cuts just right, that was a lot to ask as people. There is sort of the novelty of being able to build it yourself. I think that's actually a positive in this case. But one of my biggest complaints with this is it is so ugly. 
This is why he has to sell it as a novelty. The novelty is that it's so ugly and clunky and it's a cardboard box. You can't replace any of the parts, which means that if the cardboard box gets damaged, because you glued in everything, you basically have to buy everything again. Yeah. So there's no way around that. This is a tricky one. My dad was the inspiration for this project. The reason why I call it Bugdan Box Base, my dad's name is Kazmer Bugdan Badney. Of course I want them to love it because that makes life easy, but the payoff is celebrating my father. The sound's amazing. I was blown away. I love that we ran a logical test with professional musicians, and they couldn't tell the difference between the stand-up bass and the Bogdan bass. I'm very impressed with this. Thank you. As expensive as this is, relative to what it is, you can't really replace parts. You've glued everything in. So as an example, if the box does get damaged in some way, punctured or gets wet or something, you'd have to order the whole thing again. Uh, I can't quite get past that. So you found your niche of professional musicians who want to bring out an absurd looking instrument that still produces a good sound. But this is starting to become a pretty small niche market. And for this reason, I think the potential success for this to really produce a very large return on investment, I don't really think that potential is there. This is not something I'm interested in investing in. Sadly, I'm not interested in investing. <laughs> That was the worst reaction I could possibly get. And when it came right down to it, they were wrong. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. That's all yours. Enjoy. Nice. Thanks. I believe with all my heart that I'm improving the world. I'm showing kids, you can do this. Having an idea, creating it, offering it to the world, and spreading the joy. And I truly believe I'm spreading the joy from Detroit City all over the world. What is it with you in heights? When I was a kid, I had really tall nannies, and they kept dropping me. <laughs> On accident. I hope so. What do you ask? Well, this next inventor we're going to see, Herb Loeffler, invented a device that allows someone to lower themselves from a building up to 1,000 feet high in the event of an emergency. Wow, that's really impressive. So you're going to be the one who's going to be testing this one. I thought we'd flip a coin. It looks like uh, we're here. This looks scary to me. And that <laughs> looks like Herb. Down I go. My whole name is Herbert Loeffler, and I designed Easy Down. It's a nice, smooth ride. My wife has been very supportive, but she doesn't have the same faith in these things that I do. Three-point landing. That was impressive how fast I came down, how smoothly it was. We also have a son and a daughter, and they both think that I'm crazy, but they admire that. You've invented other things? Yes, I've invented many other things. At last count, I have about 80 patents. Wow. Of which I own very few of them. Yes. Uh, they've all been assigned to my clients. Yep. Herb has been inventing his whole life. Is he therefore a millionaire? No, but there are many millionaires because of him. Something that consumers might be familiar with is the water pick tooth cleaning device. I use uh, one of those. Well, I designed the first version of that. Wow, really? And so that uh, is still on the market today. Uh, it's a very popular item. I wasn't surprised that Herb had created many inventions and owned few patents. When you work for a large corporation, you work for salary, and they typically own all your intellectual property, which means they can make millions, you won't. So tell us what inspired you to build this invention? I was appalled by 9-11 and people jumping out of the windows to their doom. I think everybody was deeply affected by that footage of people leaping out of the building to escape this fire. And it would be really fantastic to have a device you can turn to that will get you out of a high rise and give you some chance of survival when otherwise it would be hopeless. It contains a reel of steel cable. The idea was to come up with a device that could be used by people with absolutely no training. It lowers you at about eight feet per second. Okay. Now, if you want to slow down, you pull on the handbrake, which is very much like a bicycle handbrake. Herb has invented a compact, portable device which allows you to escape from a building up to 1,000 feet high. It contains an intricate system of gears and a spool of steel cable. You attach the cable to any secure object, jump out a window, and it lowers you to the ground using a clutch braking system. 
the intent is to be very much like a, a marine life preserver. You put yes. it on and you jump, and the next person worries about what they're going to do. This is a situation where, you know, if you have 10 people in the room and one of these, you have to figure out the best. Well, best if you had 10 people in the room and there was none of these, right. you still have the same situation. Yeah, or if there yeah, were 10 of these, we'd make a lot of money and everybody would survive. True. Yeah, <laughs> right. yes. In New York alone, about a million people live above the 10th floor which is the limit from how high you can be rescued by any other means. So if the elevators and the stairwells were not passable, this is the best solution to get out of the building. When you're in an emergency situation, like a fire or a bomb scare, your body produces adrenaline, and it makes thinking clearly very difficult. So for our first test, we're gonna time how long it takes Garrett to strap on the easy down. This will give us a rough idea of how long it takes people in a real emergency to get the harness on properly. So. Don't help him, don't touch. Okay. Even if he makes a mistake, don't worry about it. According to Herb, this should be simple for the first time user and take no time at all. All right, so getting into this thing, I'd probably put it out that way. Legs here. I have a lot of experience with harnesses and this one was oddly designed and it took me longer than expected to get into it. And then this upper strap. Huh. It's interesting, I'm not used to having things on my neck. Because it's really strange I'm missing up by my face. It makes it, me nervous. It'll pull away from your face as soon as there's force on it. That's about right. That's right good. there is good? Yeah. Right. And that's good. That's, okay. that's comfortable. Okay. You, have a, you have an unusual interpretation of comfortable because I'm holding 40 <laughs> pounds on my neck. Putting this thing on took me over 30 seconds. And that may not seem like a lot, but if you're in a burning building and you're nervous about what you're doing, this could be the difference between life and death. People who buy this might need to take a training course. Yeah, we want to see what it's actually like to jump out of a building yeah. with this thing. Yeah. Excellent. We saw Herb successfully lower himself down from the crane using the easy down. But to really understand how something works and feels, one of us needs to try it out. Uh, I always like throwing Garrett out of a building, so this is an opportunity for me to do so. So I'm going to jump out the window of a six-story building. This environment or situation isn't going to exist in most buildings. In a normal office space, what would you hook this to? You hook it up to something heavy, and even an office desk is heavy enough. I'll agree with you that old office desks are heavy enough, but the new office desks that are sold at some of these furniture stores, they're made of particle board. We need to make sure Garrett is secure to the building and prepared to use this device before we go any further. Yeah, easy now. OK, you ready? Let me have it. Going out the window, you have to worry about not only smashing into the side of the building, but other obstacles, like other windows. So I'm just have to trust this thing to hold the brake. I really want to get the project going. It's been going nowhere for a couple of years. And the issue with a device like this is, does it do its job? All right, that's taut. Go slow, go slow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Are you OK? Um, this feels all right right now. When we set up the easy down, there was too much slack in the line. So when I went out the window, I dropped further than expected. All right, so I'm going to release this auto brake here. There we go. Nice. All right. I could tell that descending with this, it had a nice, smooth rate of descent and a very smooth, effective brake. And I could tell that the internals here were very well engineered, and it was just working really well. Good. The purpose of the design was to prevent the kind of deaths that occurred during 9-11. And I believe that I have come up with a way to do that. If just one life would be saved, it would justify all of the effort that went into developing it. Where do I start? There's a lot on this thing that needs to change. This hook here is terrible. This hook uh, needs something attached to it. Maybe it's a ball or something that you can throw underneath a door, close the door, that becomes the place to hook onto. I'm not thrilled about this whole furniture thing. Also, these straps, this is the sort of thing that I trust my surfboards to on top of my car, but I don't want to trust my life. This is the fail point. Got it. What I want is um, thicker, better reinforced webbing. OK. A little wider, so it's more comfortable around the legs. I agree. And I want to figure out a way to get this thing back up there without the last person having to be out with it. Right. And the last person has to come down. That's right. Yeah, got to get everybody out. All right. Well, there's a lot on the table here. Have you decided what you're going to do in this case? I have. Yeah, I've made my decision as well. This invention has some real value, and it would be nice to see it on the market. It would be nice to hear the first time it saved a life. Well, what have you decided? For me, there were a lot of things that I had trouble with with this device. I think we need some wider straps. Also, these clips, I think we need 
more secure clips. I have um, uh, one major issue, which is only a one-time use. Right. I could picture a concept where maybe something electromechanical is attached to it, which will bring it back up again, even if you were the last person out. I think that the priority in that case was save lives at the most affordable possible price so that more people will buy it. Uh, I think that adding bells and whistles, that needs to be judged because there's no limit to how much you can add to a product, but how much better does it get? For me, this is an easy decision. And I'll take this as an option over dying any day. This is definitely a product I'd be interested in investing in. But the way we do this is we both have to agree or disagree together. This is exceptionally well engineered, and you found an excellent balance between form and function. I would definitely be interested in investing in this product. That's great news. I was really flattered by what they said, what the findings were. If anything like 9-11 ever happens again, we really could save lots of lives. What an impressive guy. That was an impressive invention. Next time you have to try this thing. Yeah, I'll try this thing. You know, my living room window. Your living room's on the ground floor. Precisely.